Welcome to Chapter 4, Section 4, Gram-Positive Bacteria. Learning Objectives. Describe the unique features of each category of high GC and low GC gram-positive bacteria. Identify similarities and differences between high GC and low GC bacterial groups. Give an example of a bacterium of high GC and low GC group commonly associated with each category. Prokaryotes are identified as gram-positive if they have a multiple layer matrix of peptidoglycan forming the cell wall. Crystal violet, the primary stain of the gram stain procedure, is readily retained and stabilized within this matrix, causing gram-positive prokaryotes to appear purple under a bright field microscope after gram staining. For many years, the retention of gram stain was one of the main criteria used to classify prokaryotes, even though some prokaryotes did not readily stain with either the primary or secondary stains used in the gram stain procedure. Advances in nucleic acid biochemistry have revealed additional characteristics that can be used to classify gram-positive prokaryotes namely the guanine to cytosine ratios, GC, in DNA, and the composition of 16S ribosomal RNA subunits. Microbiologists currently recognize two distinct groups of gram-positive or weakly staining gram-positive prokaryotes. The class actinobacteria comprises the high GC gram-positive bacteria which have more than 50% guanine and cytosine nucleotides in their DNA. The class bacilli comprises low GC gram-positive bacteria, which have less than 50% of guanine and cytosine nucleotides in their DNA. Actinobacteria, high GC gram-positive bacteria. The name actinobacteria comes from the Greek words for rays and small rod but actinobacteria are very diverse. Their microscopic appearance can range from thin filamentous branching rods to cocobacilli. Some actinobacteria are very large and complex, whereas others are among the smallest independently living organisms. Most actinobacteria live in the soil, but some are aquatic. The vast majority are aerobic, one distinctive feature of this group is the presence of several different peptidoglycans in the cell wall. The genus Actinomyces is a much studied representative of actinobacteria. Actinomyces species play an important role in soil ecology, and some species are human pathogens. A number of Actinomyces species inhabit the human mouth and are opportunistic pathogens, causing infectious diseases like periodontitis, inflammation of the gums, and oral abscesses. The species A. Israeli is an anaerobe notorious for causing endocarditis, inflammation of the inner lining of the heart. The genus Mycobacterium is represented by bacilli covered with a mycolic acid coat. This waxy coat protects the bacteria from some antibiotics, preventing them from drying out and blocks penetration by gram stain reagents. Because of this, a special acid fast staining procedure is used to visualize these bacteria. The genus Mycobacterium is an important cause of a diverse group of infectious diseases. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is the causative agent of tuberculosis, a disease that primarily impacts the lungs but can infect other parts of the body as well. It has been estimated that one-third of the world's population has been infected with M. tuberculosis and millions of new infections occur each year. Treatment of M. tuberculosis is challenging and requires patients to take a combination of drugs for an extended time. Complicating treatment even further is the development and spread of multi-drug resistant strains of this pathogen. Another pathogenic species, Mycobacterium leprae, is the cause of Hansen's disease, leprosy, a chronic disease that impacts peripheral nerves and the integrity of the skin and mucosal surfaces 
of the respiratory tract. Loss of pain sensation and the presence of skin lesions increase susceptibility to secondary injuries and infections with other pathogens. Bacteria in the genus Carinobacterium contain diaminopimalic acid in their cell walls and microscopically often form palisades or pairs of rod-shaped cells resembling the letter V. Cells may contain metachromatic granules, intracellular storage of inorganic phosphates that are useful for identification of Carinobacterium. The vast majority of Carinobacterium species are non-pathogenic. However, Carinobacterium diphtheria is the causative agent of diphtheria, a disease that can be fatal, especially in children. C. diphtheria produces a toxin that forms a pseudomembrane in the patient's throat, causing swelling, difficulty breathing, and other symptoms that can become serious if untreated. The genus Bifidobacterium consists of filamentous anaerobes, many of which are commonly found in the gastrointestinal tract, vagina, and mouth. In fact, Bifidobacterium species constitute a substantial part of the human gut microbiota and are frequently used as probiotics in yogurt production. The genus Gardnerella contains only one species, Gardnerella vaginalis. The species is defined as gram-variable because its small cocobacilli do not show consistent results when gram-stained. Based on its genome, it is placed into the high GC gram-positive group G. vaginalis can cause bacterial vaginosis in women. Symptoms are typically mild or even undetectable, but can lead to complications during pregnancy. This table summarizes the characteristics of some important genera of actinobacteria. Additional information on actinobacteria appear in Appendix D. Let's see if I put that in here. Oh, here we go. Uh, some pathogens in this phylum are listed here in this class. These include most of the things that I already mentioned, except for tuberculosis in cattle, as well as uh, Propionobacterium uh, acnes that is primarily responsible for acne. Low GC gram-positive bacteria. The low GC gram-positive bacteria have less than 50% guanine and cytosine in their DNA, and this group of bacteria includes a number of genera of bacteria that are pathogenic. Clinical focus, part three. Based on her symptoms, Marsha's doctor suspected that she has, based on her symptoms, Marsha's doctor suspected that she had a case of tuberculosis. Although less common in the United States, tuberculosis is still extremely common in many parts of the world, including Nigeria. Marsha's work there in a medical lab likely exposed her to Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacterium that causes tuberculosis. Marsha's doctor ordered her to stay at home, wear a respiratory mask, and confine herself to one room as much as possible. He also said that Marsha had to take one semester off school. He prescribed isoniazid and rifampin, antibiotics used in a drug cocktail to treat tuberculosis, which Marsha was to take three times a day for at least three months. Why did the doctor order Marsha to stay at home for three months? Clostridia. One large and diverse class of low GC gram-positive bacteria is Clostridia. The best studied genus of this class is Clostridium. These rod-shaped bacteria are generally obligate anaerobes that produce endospores and can be found in anaerobic habitats like soil and aquatic sediments rich in organic nutrients. The endospores may survive for many years. Clostridium species produce more kinds of protein toxins than any other bacterial genus and several species are human pathogens. Clostridium perfringens is the third most common cause of food poisoning in the United States, 
and is the causative agent of an even more serious disease called gas gangrene. Gas gangrene occurs when C. perifringens endospores enter a wound and germinate, becoming viable bacterial cells and producing a toxin that can cause the necrosis death of tissues. Clostridium tetani, which causes tetanus, produces a neurotoxin that is able to enter neurons, travel to regions of the central nervous system where it blocks the inhibition of nerve impulses involved in muscle contractions and cause a life-threatening spastic paralysis. Clostridium botulinum produces botulinum neurotoxin, the most lethal biological toxin known. Botulinum toxin is responsible for rare but frequently fatal cases of botulism. The toxin blocks the release of acetylcholine in neuromuscular junctions, causing flaccid paralysis. In very small concentrations, botulinum toxin has been used to treat muscle pathologies in humans and in a cosmetic procedure to eliminate wrinkles. Now that uh, blocking of acetylcholine at uh, neuromuscular junctions is permanent. Clostridium difficile is a common source of hospital-acquired infections that can result in serious and even fatal cases of colitis, inflammation of the large intestine. Infections often occur in patients who are immunosuppressed or undergoing antibiotic therapy that can alter the normal microbiota of the gastrointestinal tract. Also, not to put too fine a point on it, uh, this isn't from the book, but uh, I wanted to emphasize how dangerous botulinum toxin is. So this quote uh, from this journal article indicates that a single gram of crystalline toxin evenly dispersed and inhaled would kill more than one million people, although technical factors would make such dissemination difficult. But yes, a single gram could kill a million people. Lactobacillales. The order Lactobacillales comprises low GC gram-positive bacteria that include both bacilli and cocci in the genera Lactobacillus, Leuconostoc, Enterococcus, and Streptococcus. Bacteria of the latter three genera typically are spherical or ovoid and often form chains. Streptococcus, the name of which comes from the Greek word for twisted chain, is responsible for many types of infectious diseases in humans. Species from this genus, often referred to as streptococci, are usually classified by serotypes called Lancefield groups and by their ability to lyse red blood cells when grown on blood auger. Streptococcus pyogenes belongs to the Lancefield group A, beta hemolytic streptococcus. This species is considered a pyogenic pathogen because of the associated pus production observed with infections it causes. S. pyogenes is the most common cause of bacterial pharyngitis, strep throat. It is also an important cause of various skin infections that can be relatively mild like impetigo, or life-threatening, such as necrotizing fasciitis, also known as flesh-eating disease, life-threatening. The non-pyogenic, not associated with pus production, streptococci are a group of streptococcal species that are not a taxon, but are grouped together because they inhabit the human mouth. The non-pyogenic streptococci do not belong to any of the Lancefield groups, most are commensals, but a few, such as Streptococcus mutans, are implicated in the development of dental caries. Streptococcus pneumonia, commonly referred to as pneumococcus, is a Streptococcus species that also does not belong to any Lancefield group. S. pneumonia cells appear microscopically as diplococci, uh, pairs of cells, rather than the long chains typical of most Streptococci. Scientists have known since the 19th century that S. pneumonia causes pneumonia and other respiratory infections. However, 
This bacterium can also cause a wide range of other diseases, including meningitis, septicemia, osteomyelitis, and endocarditis, especially in newborns, the elderly, and patients with immunodeficiency. Bacilli. The name of the class Bacilli suggests that it is made up of bacteria that are bacillus in shape, but it is a morphologically diverse class that includes bacillus-shaped and coccus-shaped genera. Among the many genera in this class are two that are very important clinically, bacillus and staphylococcus. Bacteria in the genus bacillus are bacillus in shape and can produce endospores. They include aerobes or facultative anaerobes. A number of bacillus species are used in various industries, including the production of antibiotics, barnases, uh, enzymes, alpha amylase, uh, BAMH1 restriction endonuclease, and detergents, subtilicin. Two notable pathogens belong to the genus Bacillus. Bacillus anthracis is the pathogen that causes anthrax, a severe disease that affects wild and domesticated animals and can spread from infected animals to humans. Anthrax manifests in humans as charcoal black ulcers on the skin, severe enterocolitis, pneumonia, and brain damage due to swelling. If untreated, anthrax is lethal. Bacillus cereus, a closely related species, is a pathogen that may cause food poisoning. It is a rod-shaped species that forms chains. Colonies appear milky white with irregular shapes when cultured on blood auger. One other important species is Bacillus thuringiensis. This bacterium produces a number of substances used as insecticides because they are toxic for insects. The Bt toxin, or the crytoxin, being uh, the most prominent. The genus Staphylococcus also belongs to the class Bacilli, even though its shape is coccus rather than a bacillus. The name Staphylococcus comes from a Greek word for bunches of grapes, which describes their microscopic appearance and culture. Staphylococcus species are facultative, anaerobic, halophilic, and non-modal. The two best studied species of this genus are S. epidermidis and S. aureus. Staphylococcus epidermidis, whose main habitat is the human skin, is thought to be non-pathogenic for humans with healthy immune systems, but in patients with immunodeficiency, it may cause infections and in skin wounds and prosthesis, or like uh, artificial joints and heart valves. S. epidermidis is also an important cause of infections associated with intravenous catheters. This makes it a dangerous pathogen in a hospital setting where many patients may be immunocompromised. Strains of S. aureus cause a wide variety of infections in humans, including skin infections that produce boils, carbuncles, cellulitis, or impetigo. Certain strains of S. aureus produce a substance called enterotoxin, which can cause severe enteritis, often called the staph food poisoning. Some strains of staph aureus produce the toxin responsible for toxic shock syndrome, which can result in cardiovascular collapse and death. Many strains of S. aureus have developed resistance to antibiotics. Some antibiotic-resistant strains are designated as methicillin-resistant S. aureus, MRSA, and vancomycin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, VRSA. These strains are some of the most difficult to treat because they exhibit resistance to nearly all available antibiotics, not just methicillin and vancomycin. Because they are difficult to treat with antibiotics, infections can be lethal. MRSA and VRSA are also contagious, posing a serious threat in hospitals, nursing homes, dialysis facilities, and other places where there are large populations of elderly, bedridden, and or immunocompromised patients. Appendix D lists the genera, species, and related diseases for bacilli. Mycoplasmas. 
Although mycoplasma species do not possess a cell wall and therefore are not stained by gram stain reagents, this genus is still included with the low GC gram positive bacteria. The genus Mycoplasma includes more than 100 species which share several unique characteristics. They are very small cells, some with a diameter of about 0.2 micrometers, which is smaller than some large viruses. They have no cell walls and therefore are pleomorphic, meaning that they may take on a variety of shapes and can even resemble very small animal cells. Because they lack a characteristic shape, they can be difficult to identify. One species, Mycoplasma pneumonia, causes the mild form of pneumonia known as walking pneumonia or atypical pneumonia. This form of pneumonia is typically less severe than forms caused by other bacteria and viruses. This table summarizes the characteristics of notable genera low GC gram positive bacteria. And this was all summarized except for the enterococcus. You can see what it does there. And there's one more that's not on here. I guess I'll need to put it on there. Urea plasma. It is similar to mycoplasma and its uh, unique characteristics include uh, that it is part of the human vaginal and lower urinary tract microbiota. Uh, they may cause inflammation, sometimes leading to internal scarring and infertility. Clinical focus resolution. Marsha's sputum sample was sent to the microbiology lab to confirm the identity of the microorganism causing her infection. The lab also performed antimicrobial susceptibility testing, AST, on the sample to confirm that the physician had prescribed the correct antimicrobial drugs. Direct microscopic examination of the sputum revealed acid-fast bacteria present in Marsha sputum. When placed in culture, there were no signs of growth for the first eight days, suggesting that microorganism was either dead or growing very slowly. Slow growth is a distinctive characteristic of Mycobacterium tuberculosis. After four weeks, the lab microbiologist observed distinctive colorless granulated colonies. The colonies contained AFB showing the same microscopic characteristics as those revealed during the direct microscopic examination of Marsha sputum. To confirm the identification of the acid fast bacteria, samples of the colonies were analyzed using nucleic acid hybridization or direct nucleic acid amplification testing. When a bacterium is acid fast, it is classified in the family Mycobacteriaceae. DNA sequencing of variable genomic regions of the DNA extracted from these bacteria revealed that it was high GC. This fact served to finalize Marsha's diagnosis as infection with Mycobacterium tuberculosis. After nine months of treatment with the drugs prescribed by her doctor, Marsha made a full recovery. Eye on Ethics, brought to us via Sigma's Eye, the Scientific Research Society, this is on biopiracy and bioprospecting. In 1969, an employee of a Swiss pharmaceutical company was vacationing in Norway and decided to collect some soil samples. He took them back to his lab and the Swiss company subsequently used the fungus Tolipocladum inflatum in those samples to develop cyclosporine A, a drug widely used in patients who undergo tissue or organ transplantation. A Swiss company earns more than $1 billion a year from production of cyclosporine A, yet Norway receives nothing in return. No payment to the government or benefit for the Norwegian people. Despite the fact that cyclosporine A saves numerous lives, many consider the means by which the soil samples were obtained to be an act of biopiracy, essentially a form of theft. Do the ends justify the means in a case like this? Nature is full of as yet undiscovered bacteria and other microorganisms that could one day be used to develop new life-saving drugs or treatments. Pharmaceutical and biotechnology companies stand to reap huge profits from such discoveries, but ethical questions remain. To whom do biological resources belong? Should companies who invest and risk 
millions of dollars in research and development be required to share revenue or royalties for the right to access biological resources. Compensation is not the only issue when it comes to bioprospecting. Some communities and cultures are philosophically opposed to bioprospecting, fearing unforeseen consequences of collecting genetic or biological material. Native Hawaiians, for example, are very protective of their unique biological resources. For many years, it was unclear what rights government agencies, private corporations, and citizens had when it came to collecting samples of microorganisms from public land. Then, in 1993, the Convention on Biological Diversity granted each nation the right to any genetic and biological material found on their own land. Scientists can no longer collect samples without a prior arrangement with the landowner for compensation. This convention now ensures that companies act ethically in obtaining the samples they use to create their products. Now that brings us to the end of Section 4. Join me next time for Section 5, Deeply Branching Bacteria.